so I'll start with the question one and just uh, work my way through. Um, so, um, question one. Um, if one atom has electron in this state with that, what are the possible values of L? So um, I do recommend that you make a use of the hint that links you to the textbook sections. I am going to use the fact that I have uh, some of these things uh, me memorized. So the value of the principal quantum number that limits what potential values uh, you are uh, L value can take. So your L can take the values 0, 1, and so on, all the way up to n minus 1. That's the magnitude of angular momentum. So with n equals 4, where it will be kept is 2, 3. Now, if you put this in, um, the system will tell you that's wrong. And that is because knowing your angular momentum projection state, that also actually limits you in what possible value of the total the angular momentum magnitude you can have. Because the projection values, they go from minus L, minus L plus 1, to through 0 sometimes, and then all the way up to plus L. So if uh, your projection state is minus 3, then your L has to be at least 3. So uh, it looks like we are just limited to L equals 3. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. If they have given us M equals minus 2, then it could have been L equals 2 or 3. Because with the L equals 3, you could have a projection that's smaller than the magnitude. Okay, let's look at the next question. What are the possible values of n for an electron in the n equals 6 state? So I guess the easiest way to do is I could list all the possible values of L. So with the n equals 6, your L could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, with these lower values of L, the angular momentum projection states that you will get, it'll kind of duplicate the number that you can get with the highest value of L. So let me just look at the highest value of L. With that, so as I said for the other question, n goes from minus L to in integer multi, uh, the increment all the way up to L. So it'll start from minus 6, minus 5, and so on, all the way to plus 5, plus 6. So I'm just going to list them all, um, actually spell it out. Minus 6, minus 5, 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. I don't think the order matters, but let me just list them this way. So And uh, if we do any lower value of L, that will repeat some of these uh, uh, possible values of L. So wait, did I miss something? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot plus 6. Wait, why is it? Oh, <laughs> at equals five is the biggest. So I shouldn't have had the minus six. All right, uh, so that should be fully correct. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many and uh, too many integers. All right, let's look at the next question. Um, what if any constraint does m equals three place? Yeah, so this is what I was looking at in question one. So it'll limit the quantum number n in such a way that L should be at least 3. So since uh, the maximum possible value of L, max, is n minus 1, that means if L has to be at least 3, then n has to be at least 4. There's a lower limit. So greater than or equal to 4. So there's a lower limit on n. For m equals 3, limits and momentum L by placing on uh, also a lower limit, I think. Yeah, L can always be larger. Yeah, so both of them lower limit. That seems a little too simple, but all right, yeah, that, those are the answers. <laughs> Let's look at question four. 
so for this question, um, it's referring to some details in the textbook. So I would recommend that you, you know, refer to the textbook section as you answer this. So in units of H bar, what is the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum for this electrode? The thing that, so, you know, if you put two here, it'll say it's wrong. And it's because um, this is one of the formulas that's in the textbook section that, you know, I expect the people to look up. Given this uh, quantum number, the actual uh, measurable magnitude of the angular momentum is given by square root of this product, L times L minus 1. So if we were classical mechanics, it might have been square root of L times L. But in quantum mechanics, for some reason, this is my L minus 1. So, uh, so this is the actual formula. So the magnitude here should be... I wonder if I can put in, uh, it needs to be an integer or decimal number. So I have to do this calculation, you know, calculator. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I think I, yeah, yeah, right. I have to do square root of two. So, um, so it's a square root of two times two minus one or one. So it's a square root of two, uh, 1.414. What is the number of possible values uh, projection of angular moment yeah can take so with l equals two the possible state would for m sub l would be plus two plus one zero minus one minus two so five possible values for the angular momentum with the largest possible value of l g what is the polar angle that is the yeah, so this is um, coming from a model that, oh, yeah. And this is, there's a, a picture of that in the textbook. Let me show you. Um, so the, yeah, yeah, let me show you. Because it's a kind of the visual thing that's uh, best uh, um, seen in a visual form <laughs> the way it's in the textbook. So it's, uh, there's a picture of the, let's see. I think there's a one that displays a few different values. Yeah, so this is, I think, the clearest uh, representation. So you imagine the magnitude being the the this constant length, which matches with our intuitive sense of magnitude in classical mechanics, and the projection value giving the, the projection along the z-axis for different value of m. And um, so these distances are going to be different. It'll be shorter than the magnitude and uh, yeah, shorter. And that, so you um, you use this relationship. The, for, from, for example, this triangle here, you can say the, the projection LG is equal to the magnitude cosine theta. And basically what you're doing is solving for cosine theta. And do arc cosine. So, um, so yeah, I just plug in numbers for that. So now The thing that I might have misremembered the formula. This might be L times L plus one. Because I think that's the only way the formula I'm thinking makes sense. So let me try this. Uh, I'm going to click submit. It'll probably say that's incorrect. Um, then I will correct it. Yes, let me correct it. <laughs> So what it should be is uh, it should be square root of two times three. That uh, two times three. That's what I'm taking square root of. Yeah, two point four four nine. Yeah. As I was looking at the diagram, that diagram only made a sense uh, if uh, the if the magnitude was longer than the largest value the projection could be. So the projection is going to be for this state a uh, two, two h bar. That's the longest projection, and so two two divided by two point four four nine. That's giving me the cosine of the angle. So I'll calculate um, two 
divided by 2.449. That's the cosine of theta. So I do inverse cosine to get what theta is in degrees. 35.2. Yeah, I think that's about right. And uh, one kind of caveat to leave you with is um, this is um, it's a model of a sort. It's a kind of visual representation. It's a, there are contexts where this interpretation is perfectly fine, okay, doesn't lead to any mistakes or wrong results. And there are contexts where literally thinking of spin states like this or angular momentum states like this can lead, lead to errors. So these visual models, I'll just give you caution that um, all models break at some point. The only thing that's fully correct is the full mathematical description of quantum mechanical systems. So, okay, so let me continue. Um, I think the next one is question five, which I have done. So let me go on to question six, which I haven't done. <laughs> Answer below questions, ignoring the electron spin. Okay, um, so what I'm considering is um, basically the three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l. So with n equals one shell, oh, there's just going to be one. Because uh, we do this, I know my l is equal to zero. So the only possible value of the projection is zero. And this is the really the main thing, the key thing that the Bohr model got, got it wrong. If the ground state is a zero angular momentum state, which Bohr model didn't anticipate. Um, N equals two, okay. So L is, go, uh, this is still a possible value. Don't forget that. And the additional possible value is now L is equal to one which will lead to m sub l is plus one, zero, minus one. So there's a total of four possible states. And I hope you are going to see a pattern once I get to the next state. Um, so with n equals three, again, your l values, all the lower values remain possible. So there's gonna be one here, there's gonna be uh, three from here, and with the l is equal to two state, there's going to be um, plus 2, plus 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, 5 states. So um, there's going to be a total of 9 states. And I hope you begin to see, um, yeah, notice a pattern. <laughs> Looks like I'm squaring the end. So all right, let's take a guess. 144 for the n equals 12 state. Um, yeah, which is a super high, yeah. So... And the, yeah, that guess is right. <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, these three, you can do the counting the way I did. You can also look at periodic table that might actually give you some idea. This is the kind of answer that much quicker to get once you recognize the pattern. So, all right, so that's uh, question six. Let's uh, look at the next question. Find the magnitude of the orbital magnetic dipole moment of the electron in the 3p state. Um, okay, I first have to read. Um, so 3, that's uh, um, my n value. p, this comes from chemistry, um, orbital notation. What I do remember s is uh, l is equal to 0. And I think a P is L is equal to one. So L is equal to one. Okay. Um, so I can tell you it's a spin, um, spin angular momentum, the magnitude is the square root of one times one plus one H bar. And what I don't fully have memorized is if, uh, um, if a Bohr magneton is simply what you do get with the um, H bar as angular momentum, maybe. Let me take a guess and put in an answer. And if the system says it's wrong, I will look at the actual textbook formula, <laughs> which will give me the correct answer. <laughs> but let me first take a guess. If my guess is right, 
the numerical factor there should be square root of 1 times 2, so 2 square root it, 1.4 and 4. If it says it's wrong, I will go look up the formula and do it, but I don't have to, I guessed it right. <laughs> And but I will say this is the kind of detailed thing where uh, life is short. You don't have to memorize everything. Just know where to look things up. That should be fine enough. <laughs> okay, for n equals two, write only one of the possible. Oh yeah, so there's a lot. So really, the only requirement is your n should be equal to two. And uh, I guess if you are in a really um, lazy mood, <laughs> you could go with a zero zero. L equals zero is um, a lot of state. And uh, be careful, the last number cannot be zero. It has to be plus one half or minus one half. So I could go with the minus one half. Um, so that should be correct. Yeah. And uh, there, there's many different to correct answers here. Um, the only incorrect answers are like impossible states, like L equals two state is not possible for N equals two. So that would be wrong, but... Um, yeah. Or if you put in a negative number here, that would be wrong. But a lot of um, a lot of right answers. Um, I guess there should be a two square root of four. There should be eight possible answers here that will be considered correct. So okay, next question. Question nine. Write the electron <laughs> Okay, this is more of a chemistry question. I don't know if I'm going to remember this. Uh, okay, that helps. Uh, I cannot look up the periodic table. Um, is there a periodic table here? Periodic table. Or I could... Uh, okay, okay. I think... Uh, oh, wait. I think I can just look it up here. Uh, I think I just scrolled through. Okay. Potassium K. Um, okay, K is uh, too high up to, okay, okay, K, okay, K comes right after argon, so it's going to be argon as something, argon, um, one, two, three, four, 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 S1, I think. Oh, good. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done chemistry. And yeah, I guess uh, we do do this because it's a lower division physics. A lot of you taking this class also have to take chemistry. Um, just me, I, as a physics major, I never had to take chemistry, not college chemistry. The last chemistry I took was, uh, I guess I took AP chemistry, but it's not really the same as the general chemistry that a lot of engineers take, a lot of physics transfer students take. Um, <laughs> I, I never took general chemistry. Okay, the ion, Li doubly ionized, makes an atomic transition from... Oh, and this is actually important, because uh, lithium, if I remember right, it's, uh, it's the third element. So this is a hydrogen-like ion that actually uh, makes it easier to handle. Otherwise, um, the energy levels for any atom or ion other than hydrogen would be very complicated. But because of this is hydrogen-like, um, we can use the formula. And I don't think I have it fully memorized. So let me look it up. Oh, there's no hint. Let me look it up. It, I should be able to use the formula from section 8.1 where they talk about the hydrogen atom. I think they will... They will uh, give you the version of the formula that has G in it. Yeah, this is the energy levels. And actually, if it, um, I can guess from here what the version of the formula with the G would be. Basically, this is the, the, the electric charge term. It comes from the product of the two charges, the, the, uh, the charge at the nucleus and the, uh, and the charge um, of the electron. And I guess they're, they, they come, become some power for some reason. So where you have e to the fourth, uh, if your charge of the nucleus changes, then that charge will become G 
E squared. And the charge of the electron didn't change, so that'll remain. So uh, the version of this with the, the G indicating the amount of charge in the nucleus will be um, E N with the G in it would be the so same thing here, minus E naught over N squared. And for this factor here, there will be G squared. So that's how I would remember once I'm able to see the form of the expression. And let's just uh, double check <laughs> with the textbook that I remember this correctly. Uh, so I'm pretty sure in the textbook somewhere they actually give you the version with the G. So or maybe they don't. Well, do they not? Oh, I mean, if they don't, this could be a really difficult question for people to answer. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, you would do. Uh, so if you don't, um, um, if you aren't able to go through the reasoning process that I went through, you can read through the textbook, find this formula, and use it. That is allowed. So, uh, so I already know E naught. E naught is uh, 13.6 eV. One of the few constants I've memorized. <laughs> so. Uh, so let me write down the energy of the each state. So n equals eight state. Uh, let me just calculate it on my calculator. So what that should be is um, so thirteen point six times my now because lithium is the third element. My g here should be three. There are three protons in the nucleus, so it'll be that times three squared divided by the n state squared, so 8 squared is equal to 1.913 eV. And there's a minus sign, so minus 1.913 eV. And for n equals 2 state, let's uh, plug the numbers again. 13.6 times 3 squared divided by 2 squared. Minus 30.6 EV. Wow, that seems really high. But I guess that's right. Um, yeah, so the energy of photon emitted should be the difference between these two, or can I do this in my head? <laughs> um, 28 point. Uh, I think. Let me check on my calculator. Uh, minus 1.913. Uh, yeah. Let me just double check that's correct. Wow, that is a high. Um, yeah. So the wavelength, um, so here, just to remember through the formula so here, um, it's uh, easiest for me to remember that energy of a photon is related to its frequency through Planck's constant times frequency. And once I have frequency, then uh, frequency of any wave is related to its wave speed and wavelength through wave speed is frequency times wavelength. So, or frequency is a C over lambda. So, energy is H times C over lambda or solving for lambda, lambda is uh, hc over e. And here, I think I am going to use O from alpha so that I don't have to look up constants. So what I have is a plus constant times the speed of light divided by the energy, 28.687 electron volts. 
So yeah, that seems right. 43, so you know, that's 10 to the power of minus 8. So moving one decimal point for nanometer, 43.2 nanometers, yeah, uh, deep in the UV. I think that's right, yeah, yeah, good. Was that the last question, question 10? Yeah, I think that's the last question. Yeah, so did all the questions, yeah. So the reason I hadn't done uh, these questions is they're on the easier side. Uh, there are some uh, questions where you have to look up the formulas, but once you know what formulas to look up, then it's fairly easy.